Hey, we're the Hassewells and we love travelling, but a little pandemic struck the world and now we can't. So since it looks like domestic travel is going to be it for the next little while, we thought we'd show you around our hometown of Canberra and give you some local tips for things to see and do while you're here. If you're from Australia, you probably think that the first thing that you should do in Canberra is get on a plane and leave Canberra. <laughs> The problem with that is right now there are exactly no planes leaving Canberra. But before you hire a car and speed on out of here, we're going to show you a couple of reasons why it might be worth sticking around for a bit longer. thing you're going to want to do in any new city is find a view and this is one of Canberra's best views. This is Mount Ainsley and from up here you can see pretty much all of Canberra in any direction. Canberra has a bit of a strange town centre set up where there are five town centres with shops etc which are Woden, Tugranong which is in the distance behind Woden, Civic, Belconnen and Gungalan. And then there's Queenbeyan as well, which is a small town just over the border from Canberra. And it's about 20 minutes to get from Civic to anywhere in Canberra by car, so pretty easy to get around. We didn't go into Parliament House or the War Memorial this time around, but you can go in for free or a small donation in the case of the War Memorial. The coolest thing about both of these is if you stand at the War Memorial and look towards Parliament House, you can see the old Parliament House and the new Parliament House in a row with what seems like a red line in the middle joining them together. When Australia became a federation back in 1901, Sydney and Melbourne had a big fight about who was going to be the capital city and the compromise that they came up with was building Canberra. They held a competition to decide who would design Canberra and Walter Burley Griffin won. And this lake, Lake Burley Griffin, is named after him. Walking around the lake is one of Canberra's favourite pastimes and there's a hot debate over whether you should walk anti-clockwise or clockwise. For Covid, they've decided on clockwise. Ah, autumn in Canberra. There's a rainbow in the jet. The leaves are delicious looking. going to pretty much always need in Canberra is some warm winter clothing because unless you're here in the dead of summer when it's hellishly hot like the rest of Australia it's probably going to be cold. The Arboretum is another place to get a spectacular view of Canberra. It looks back down on the lake on this side but you can also just drive all around it and see all the different sides of Canberra from the Arboretum. And it's an added bonus if you like trees because there's all different kinds of trees planted in there for you to check out. And it's totally free to go into, just like most of the other places on our list. So this is Telstra Tower, which is another place where you can get a great viewpoint from Canberra, uh, normally. Right now it's closed because of a certain little thing that's going on in the globe. 
but usually you can go up to a viewing deck up the top and have a look all around Canberra and there used to be a revolving restaurant up here but it closed down a few years ago and hopefully will be open one day so I guess keep an eye out when you're here and see what you can and can't do. I think I'll be able to find some pictures from last time we went up there which was a couple of years ago now but I'm sure the view hasn't changed that much so I'll see if I can find them and put them in this video. So on the way up or down from Telstra Tower, depending on which way you're going, are these little viewpoints where you can actually see something. Because right at the top, there's just trees everywhere and you can't see a thing. Um, mm -hmm. And even when it's open up there, you, it's a small fee to get in. How much was it again? 750 for adults and children under four free. So if you don't want to pay that fee, you can just come down the road a bit and see it for free. Here's another one for the tree lovers. This is the Australian Botanical Gardens and you can come hang out here and get away from people for a while. This is another place that's free to get into, although the parking is not free. And that's another thing that you should know about Canberra. The public transport is a little bit naff, so you're probably going to need a car to get around. How cool is this little fern area though? I think it's true, tree ferns are cool. <laughs> things. Here's a good spot for when you don't want to go to Alice Springs in the middle of Australia, but just say that you did. <laughs> just kidding, it's not the same at all. for six weeks in a row and the hottest recorded temperature here in the shade is 56. Can you pretend that's Uluru I suppose? <laughs> nope, even with camera angles I can't make it look as big as Uluru. What you gonna do? The entrance to the Botanic Gardens is right near the entrance to Telstra Tower so you can do them both in one go. Rainforest Gully in Canberra. Who would have thought? Constructed in 1984. It's almost as old as me. You mean other than stay home in our apartment? My favourite thing to do, go to the pub. <laughs> the favourite thing of men everywhere, you heard it here first. So 
we've come to do one of Jesse's favourite things to do in Canberra, which is go to the pub. <laughs> and this is Capital Brewing, um, which is a place in Canberra where they brew their own beer. You can also get burgers here from Broad Burger, which is a Canberra institution in the burger department. Delicious burgers. So we've ordered our burgers and Jesse's got a beer. What beer did you get? Uh, oat cream IPA. A new one, a delicious one. But they're mainly, they're probably all delicious. Yeah. Full of crunchy oats. <laughs> it's uh, chewy. No, no, not really. <laughs> and me being gluten challenged, as it were, I've, I've got a cider. So if you can't have beer or you don't like beer, there are other options here. You can grab a cider, some ginger beer or a wine. The cool thing about coming here is that you can order your burgers online without even leaving your table. Or of course you can go and order in person. So we're going to choose some burgers now. Oh, and be sure to get the blue cheese sauce because it's really the only way to go. So the story of Broadburger is that they used to be a small little van that was in a park and since then they've expanded to a couple more restaurants and they've got a van right here at Capital Brewing so you can have a burger with your beer. They have gluten-free buns so people like me can have burgers. I can have burger too. This one's called the Broad Burger, and at some of the other restaurants you can get more options than this one. So just keep that in mind if gluten is a thing that you're trying to avoid. Um, in the full-size restaurants you can actually get more options. It's not too shabby if you can get above it. <laughs>